Hey gamers, it's Winamute here from Grind This Game. Back with Oxygen Not Included. Uh, playing this Ice World map. And I had a big uh, insulated room up here full of hydrogen. Or I was filling it with hydrogen down from uh, down below here from our electrolyzer. Sending the hydrogen up here. I had a bunch of wheeze warts in here before. I think I had eight. Still have six in there, but um what I'm building out here is a oxygen liquefaction system and the design is from a streamer known as uh, LifeGrow. He also has, has a YouTube channel and he goes through a bunch of different ways to cool oxygen in the video. Uh, it's really good. He goes into lots of different designs and this is the one that I understood the best and seemed like the most straightforward. So I'll kind of talk my way through what I have so far. And so this main chamber is going to be full of really cold hydrogen. This chamber is going to be full of somewhat cool polluted oxygen, which we'll get from down in our uh, more broom down here, right here. So I'll pump up this polluted oxygen. I'll store it in this room. It'll kind of pre-cool with these wheeze warts. And then we'll trickle it into this main chamber that has really cool hydrogen. So I've put all the piping in already. So this pump, um, depending on certain conditions, will pump a small amount of polluted oxygen into this chamber if it's cool enough and if the pressure is right. And then if this chamber ever, ever gets too warm, uh, we'll pump the hydrogen out and we'll cool it down with these two uh, thermoregulators. We've, I've connected them in series. so. The hydrogen will probably come in at around negative 200, go through these two and drop 28 degrees, and then be put back in the room. And this chamber over here is if the pressure ever falls in this reaction chamber, it will take kind of reserve hydrogen and pump it in here. And I'll probably open up this room uh, again so that we can have excess hydrogen, or I'll just send the hydrogen that I'm putting right here I'll just keep this room pressurized so we can always have spare hydrogen if we need it. Uh, this thing up here, I've never used this before, but this is a mechanical filter. So the way these work is similar to a gas filter, but it doesn't require any power. And it works through the principle that two gases can't uh, occupy the same section of pipe at the same time. So if you prime it with hydrogen and then happen to send in a different gas, it will filter the output this way back into our kind of main chamber. So we'll see how that works out. If it doesn't work out, we can just use a regular old uh, gas filter, but I thought I would try it out. So now I gotta hook up all the wiring. Uh, so I'll do that and then I'll kind of talk, talk you through how it works. So I here's all the circuit uh, circuits that I put in the power for this thing. So there's two main circuits. There's one here powering kind of everything up top, the these three pumps and this filter, and then there's a second circuit that powers the two thermoregulators and this pump here. And there's a lot of regulation going on here, so I'll just talk through that. So this, I guess I'll talk about this piece right here first. So the power coming in here to this pump, if the temperature is below negative 200, as in, is, is it cold enough here to liquefy oxygen? And if the pressure is below 1,000, then it's safe to trickle polluted oxygen into the system. So this pump will run. It will go through this gas valve, which is set, should be set to 100, or a very small amount of, maybe I'll set it lower, 50, 50 grams per second of polluted oxygen. That'll come in here, and this is this piece here is just from the gas bridge from above, but, so you can ignore that. Come in here and go out these two vents. It'll hit the super cold hydrogen that should be at negative 200, and turn to liquid, clean liquid oxygen, and then this other regulator here, right here, this hydro switch. If the liquid pressure is above 475 kilograms, then this pump will kick in and it'll send the liquid out over here. I'm going to make a holding tank for it. 
Now the other set of regulation going on is this piece right here. Now if the gas pressure is below 805, or 800, doesn't need to be 805, then we need to pressurize this room a little bit more. So what that does is it is it'll turn on this pump over here and this filter and it'll grab the excess hydrogen from here and pressurize the room back up. Now these uh, manual airlocks are made out of wolframite and they'll enable, they'll basically keep because they, they have mass of 200 kilograms I think. Let's just see here. Yeah, 200, 200 kilograms. They'll basically buffer temperature changes. So it'll take a lot longer to cool down this room because it has to cool down these manual airlocks. But once it's at negative 200, it will hold that temperature much more steady. Any kind of warmer hydrogen that comes in will be really quickly cooled by these manual airlocks that have been pre-cooled. We could also put some wolframite pipes in the background to add even more mass, but I'm probably going to hold off on that. It's going to take a while to cool this whole system down. Right now it's not even below zero yet in this central chamber. So I think we'll let this thing rip and see how it runs. Got to turn on these switches. So there it goes. It's pumping hydrogen out of the main chamber, sending into this uh, mechanical filter, down here into the two thermoregulators, and it's coming out cooler than it was going in. It's going in at about 13 and it's coming out at about negative 14, which is correct. It should drop by 28 degrees, 14 degrees per thermoregulator. So that'll continue to run and the central chamber should get down to minus 200. Oh, maybe I didn't talk about this thermo switch here. So if the current temperature is warmer than negative 200, this this uh, pump will kick in and cool the cool the hydrogen. Yeah, I don't think I mentioned that one. It can't be any much lower than this because we don't want to cool the hydrogen below its liquid liquid uh, point, which is negative 252. If it turned to liquid in the system and was in the pipes, it would fracture and break the pipes. So oh, I'll let that run for a while. It might take a very long time for this to cool down, but uh, I'll come back once it's, once it's cooled down. So I'm just building a pipe up from this polluted oxygen area up into this uh, polluted oxygen chamber here. And it's going to take a very long time, I think, to cool this down. I'm kind of keeping an eye on this one little airlock here. It was at minus four about a cycle ago. So you can see it cooling down, but we got to get to negative 200, so it's probably going to take maybe 50 cycles, maybe more. It's going to take a while. So we can kind of do some other projects while that's running. <laughs> These guys don't look very happy here. It's carbon dioxide here. Uh, just changing the threshold here for this carbon skimmer so we can get rid of the CO2 that's being made by the dupes. They're certainly training up their athletics with all this running on the wheel. It's kind of the only way we can make power though, other than coal. Because we have no natural gas and our coal reserves are good but kind of finite. Okay, we got a lot of idle dupes. Let's get them let's get them busy. I think I might add another tile here and drip the polluted ox uh, polluted water here so it can drain in. Oh, look at all the CO2 here. They can't breathe. I think I'll branch off some of that oxygen right here. And we do have spare algae so I could turn this thing back on. There, that'll help a bit. I don't want to use this very long though because algae is finite. We'll see how this vent helps them. It's going to be stealing some of the oxygen though and so it's going to get a bit thinner up here. Okay, let's start exploring this way. 
And I think it's safe to dig through here. This polluted water is really warm. 37 degrees. Hmm. So it looks like the polluted water out of the carbon skimmer is coming out not at the temperature of the machine, but just at a fixed fixed temperature. And along the way it's going to warm up the base, and that is bad. So I'll probably replace this pipe with uh, abyssalite. What is that right now? Probably sandstone? Yeah. And they can't get in there, so I'll have to open this up. There they go. Probably use a wheeze wart here, but we're out at the moment. Let's see who we have here. Twelve tinkering, wow. Diver's lungs? Oh, we like them. Welcome, Ellie. That's probably the last dupe I want to take, though. How's oxygen? Uh, a little bit better. Temperature slowly creeping up. Which I do not want. So we will put a Weezwort here later. Once we uh, get some more. Okay, let's check in on our thing here. Oh, minus 14. Okay, good. We've gone down about 10 degrees. Lot. Look at all this copper in here. Delicious. So might as well crack in here. And uh, I need an algae terrarium here. So they can breathe while they work, because we have no exosuits. Actually, there's a little bit of oxalate here we can crack open. It'll help slightly. And lots of coal in here, which we'll need. Okay, we're going to hit the left-hand side of the map. I don't think we're that close to it, though. Well, maybe we are. We, it's, I think we have to go a distance similar to this in this direction, so it's probably right around, right around here. What are you doing up there? <laughs> Can he get down? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, it looks much better in here. But I'll disable this just for now. Minus 19. It's slowly coming along. Oh, minus 56 in here. Wow. I could have probably fit a wheeze ward in here, maybe. But there's no point. This will this will cool it down eventually. This gas is at minus 42 now. That means this uh, block will eventually uh, reach minus 42. This airlock. So I'll come back in 10 or 20 cycles once that's cooled down and once I've explored a little bit more here. So it's been almost 50 cycles since this thing started cooling down. It took a long time, but it's getting close to negative 200 now. The hydrogen in here is at minus 193. And these wolframite doors are sitting at minus 195. I had to change this a bit um, because these thermoregulators were warming up. They were get, getting close to 40 degrees, so I put in two more wheeze warts. So that's one change I did. And I've piped the uh, polluted oxygen in. And this chamber sitting at minus 60. It's nicely pre-cooled. So I think I'm going to actually tweak the settings here a little bit just to get a tiny amount of polluted oxygen in, just to see it working. So I'm going to let 10 grams per second in. So I have to change this thermo switch, lower it a little bit to minus 194. Oops. And change this atmo switch to maybe uh, 1700 just to allow a little bit of gas in. So there we go. Got some pure oxygen in there too, which is no good, but. So let's see if we can see that polluted oxygen. Oh, we got liquid right away. Perfect. Very nice. 
and I've set up a pipe to dump it over here. I made a little collection vessel. So once it hits in here, it'll automatically turn into gas right away. Then we can send it to the base, or maybe crack this open. I'm not sh sure what I'll do yet, but so we got 410 grams of liquid oxygen here. <laughs> gonna take a while. The system's still cooling down too so it's it's not quite at minus 200. I'm gonna change this Atmos switch back to 1000. And we might have to vent a little bit of this hydrogen. I did a few other things while this was uh, cooling down. A lot of digging. Oh and I kind of got off our... Res we were using coal to power this whole thing and I disabled all of these coal generators and I put in uh, some manual generators here so two are powering this circuit and I put two up here to power this other circuit and I added another pump here to get more oxygen to the base because we were running a little bit low so that's been working well. That way we're not using any coal or producing a bunch of CO2. And I'm oxygenating this area here. And the base has been looking really good for the last 50 cycles. Haven't, need to, haven't needed to use any algae at all. And I started a little bit of a cold room down here. How's it doing? Minus 10. What I'm going to try to do with this room is send in CO2 and try to liquefy it and collect it here. So, but that's going to take a while to cool down there. Uh, what else have we done? The water level hasn't gone down like even one tile in this whole 50 cycles. So that's that's good. Even though we got two electrolyzers going. Our morbs have been multiplying. So we've got a good constant supply of polluted oxygen. We're sending some half of it to this room to be cleaned and we're sending half up to the, uh, the liquid oxygen maker. And I put in a shower just because I was tired of seeing the little dupes being grimy. I don't think grimy actually does anything. I don't think it does a negative debuff but I'm not sure. But I felt I felt bad so I put it in. Uh, this fluted water thing has been filling up and this fluted oxygen is venting off and going into the steodorizer. That's working well. And I dug this way to the left. And got to the side of the map. And I'm trying one more thing down here. So I, I dug all the way down and got to the lava. Oh no, my container. <laughs> my container just got destroyed, but that's okay. I put some dirt in uh, dirt in here. And I wanted to see if I could uh, turn it into sand. Actually, it's, it's hmm, dirt. Yeah, it is increasing in temperature, so at some point it might turn into sand. The dupes got pretty injured when they dug this out. <laughs> it's super hot in here, and I blocked it off with the bislite for now, just because I don't want it to heat up the whole area. Food has been stable this whole time. Uh, it's been sitting around 30 to 40,000 and I haven't needed. To, I built four more mealwood here, so it's pretty much in balance. Added some decor in the main areas that they're hanging out. So I think if I left the base now just like this, it would it would be fine for many, many hundreds of cycles until sand uh, or, uh, until the sand was all used up. There's 176 tons. And there's a lot of it left on the map. I haven't used it all. Some here. It's all over the place. We haven't used, we haven't used it all yet. So it is sending oxygen in again now. There was some clean oxygen in here. Eventually it'll make its way through the system and we'll just get polluted oxygen. Oh, there's some more. So I adjusted the settings. Temperature, if, as long as it's below 197, it'll activate. 
and the pressure has to be below 1800. And that seems to be working now. And only rarely will this pump come on to cool the whole thing down. And I set this hydro switch to be just one kilogram of liquid just to see it come through. So it should hit one kilogram pretty soon and then we can see it go through the pipe and enter in here. And it turns into a gas right away. There it goes. Some liquid oxygen. So you can see it pop out here. There it goes and turns into a gas right away. So that's going to be it for this episode. I'm glad I got this built. It took so long to cool down, but now it's cooled down, so it should work pretty well. And this will give us a nice source of clean oxygen going forward from polluted oxygen. So if you're enjoying these videos, uh, hit that subscribe button and click the little bell if you want to get an email each time I release a new video. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.